In this video, we're going to take a very close look at this mini hydroelectric generator. This version here is a 12 volt. It's also available in a 5. I picked this one up on Amazon. As you can see, the inlet and outlet on this mini generator uses a half inch male pipe thread. Because it's not a very large generator, the output is not going to be high current. You can see 12 volts up to 150 milliamp. Now even though the power output is low for something like this, there are a couple of uses. The first one, you may want to monitor a water line. You want to know if water is being used, especially like an outside hose bib, far from your home. You want to make sure that there's no one using it when you're not there. So what you can do is connect this in line closer to your home where the pipe would be leading all the way to that hose bib. This end here would have the power output which can easily be connected to another circuit that will trigger an alarm. Once the power goes on with the flow of water, the alarm will sound. Another use would be to take the power directly off the leads for a low current device, or you can take a supercapacitor, connect it up to the output of this mini hydroelectric generator, and store a lot of the current that's being generated in the supercapacitor so when the water turns off, you have a reserve of power that you can use until the water turns on again. So first, let's open this up, take a look at the inside, and see how it's made. Let me carefully remove all six Phillips screws. I'm sure there's going to be some seals here to prevent water from leaking out. Okay, the last screw. And just so you know, this is not very expensive. I think I paid around 12 bucks. Okay, let's lift this cover off. So right over here, we have a circuit board with six diodes. So that tells me this is a three-phase generator. We're going to see in a minute. Over here is a capacitor to smooth the voltage output. And over here, it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but that's a 12-volt voltage regulator just like a LM7812. So more than likely the 5 volt version is going to have like a LM7805 instead of an LM7812. Let's lift this off. Okay, yeah, it's correct. So you can see there's three wires going into that mini little stator. Hard to tell what the configuration is for the three phase. It might be a delta or it could be a star. But let me explain to you exactly how this is connected to this board. Over here you can see in this image a three phase stator and it's going to be a star configuration. I'll show you what delta looks like in a minute but you can see there's one connection here that's one of the red wires, another one there and another one over here. Each one of those phases goes to a set of diodes. The purpose of the diodes is to convert the alternating current into direct current. So as this is spinning, the stator, or the magnets around the stator, you have a voltage being produced. Of course, the faster it spins, the higher the voltage output, the slower it spins, the lower the voltage output. So only the positive peaks of the AC waveform are going to be able to pass in this direction, making this your positive. And over here, only the negative peaks are going to pass to the lower rail where the negative is. The power output from all three phases then goes into the voltage regulator, which I showed you. And then before it leaves the unit, you have a capacitor across the output that's going to smooth out any ripples in the direct current. Just to show you if it's not a star configuration, a delta configuration looks like what you see right here. Instead of having all three windings connected at one point, here you have one winding, two winding, three windings, and then you would have your outputs like this. That would be delta. There are differences between the two configurations and normally or typically you would find the delta configuration in generators. Okay so back to the little mini electric generator you could see there are nine poles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got an o-ring seal here it appears to be constructed pretty well, considering it's an inexpensive generator. Let's take this off. 
Okay, so the inside. Got this. And you can see the veins. So there's clearly a seal on the opposite side of this wheel that spins. So the water pressure would go into the veins, causing this to spin as it exits through the opening over here. All around the edges of this wheel that spins, right over here, are going to be magnets. So as this moves, the magnetic field is going to induce currents into these poles, which is picked up by the windings, and then the power goes through the three red wires to this board. Let me put it back together, take it outside, and give it a try. Okay, the generator is connected up to the shower head. Let me turn on the water and make sure we see a 12 volt output. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can see we leveled off around 11. And the reason for that is because the flow restrictor inside the shower head. So if I take off the shower head, it should maintain 12. Let's give that a try. Now you can see with a much greater volume of water, we're holding the 12 volt regulated output. Now let me connect something up to see how it powers with the water running. Let's try each one of these uh, incandescent, incandescent lights. This is from an instrument cluster, older vehicle. So that's working. Voltage is holding. That means it can supply enough current to that light. Let's try this one. Voltage is dropping because it's drawing a lot more than 150 milliamps. Let's see how much current this is drawing this bulb. So only 25 milliamps. Okay, I have my load tester connected up. It's set to 150 milliamps. So once this has full flow, I'm going to turn on the load tester and apply that 150 milliamp load. It should be able to handle it. If it doesn't, we're going to know that the rating on this is bogus. Let's give it a try. All right, as you just saw, it worked fine momentarily and then it turned off the load tester. The reason why it turned off is because the output voltage dropped below 11 with a 150 milliamp load. So 150 is not going to happen. Let's take it down to 140 and see if we can stay above 11 volts. Still no good. Let's take it down to 100. As you just saw, using full flow, the maximum power you're going to get out of this unit is right around 115 milliamp hours. So it's not going to be the 150 that's stamped on this unit. I could say I'm not surprised because almost all these companies exaggerate the ratings. So now you know what this unit can do if you decide to purchase one.
And guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.